since unfortunately a lot of the characters move rather slowly without the scroll, it'll take you a large amount of time sometimes just to backtrack a couple of screens. That treasure chest will actually give you a large amount of magic back, but we're not going to be using that chest. Instead, head back up to the top area, use the ladder, and get back outside of the dungeon. Once back outside, just go over to the house and then reselect Pochi. Now it's time to actually start heading towards Pochi's crown. We're going to be working our way back towards the same area that we did with Lil. You'll be seeing these few screens quite a few times throughout the course of the game, as pretty much I think every character will have to walk through at least a few of these screens to get back to the big open area where the dragon portrait is. From the large painting, head over to the right and go down the ladder at the far end. This takes you into Pochi's area of the dungeon. Throughout the year, there's been many different tricks found in order to actually complete different areas of the dungeon using only one or two characters. Using Lil now, you can actually use many different tricks to collect three of the four crowns using her. However, during this run, I thought it was best to show you actually collecting the crowns as the characters that you were supposed to collect them as. Interestingly enough, though, there is no order to the crowns. When you actually find the first crown of the game, you go to fight the first boss. So, if you find a crown, you're fighting the same boss no matter what. So the third crown will always be against the same third boss, no matter which crown you're actually collecting. Down here, you have to use this flying enemy. Jumping on its head will actually send it higher up each time in order to get through the opening at the top and grab the glove. With that, head back through the opening and head down the ladder now. Once you fall off the ladder down here, bounce off the enemy so that you can get over to this area. Walking up and then to the right on the top second to last brick will allow you to go through each of the next walls to get over to the next spot. You'll then have a little bit of maze of blocks to walk your way through in order to get down to the next screen. Once over here, jump your way along the blocks to get to the treasure chest on the upper right corner, which will give you a large amount of gold again, pretty much refilling all the gold that we used to have. Then, when you're up here, you have to walk your way through a large maze using a few keys in order to get through.
When you head up this ladder, jump straight up to get to the next screen. If you really need to replenish your magic or health, you can actually stop by the end to get it. If not, jump your way up to get to the first crown. Once you have a crown, you'll be teleported to the boss room. Now these bosses can be very tricky. The key is either mashing the button extremely fast or using a turbo controller. Wait for the spider to get over, then jump on top of it and walk your way through it, mashing the fire button as fast as possible. If you do this quick enough, you'll actually defeat the boss extremely fast and be teleported out of the dungeon. Once you're teleported out of the dungeon, walk back to the house and it's time to change characters again. Select Lil again, now we're actually going to be going after her crown, the second crown of the game for us. Select the Matak as well as the Spike Shoes as we'll need those items to really help us out throughout the dungeon. Back inside the dungeon, we're going to be heading towards the same area as always, back to the big portrait room. Once you're back to the portrait room, head to the right again, and then head to the upper right ladder, just as we did before with Lil. All the enemies are completely different throughout the game, and there's a good amount of them overall. They act a little bit different than one another, and they all take a couple of hits to defeat. There really isn't necessarily a strategy though, as thankfully you have so much health in the game, you will take a lot of hits without really losing too much health. Use the same strategy as before to climb up on the enemy, but instead of going to the right this time, we're now heading to the left. We don't need that treasure chest, so I'm going to try to avoid hitting it, as we don't need the item inside, it's just one of those ones with health or magic. De-equip the spiked shoe, and use the flying ghost type enemy in order to get to the upper right platform. This can be a little bit tricky, and you'll have to get used to the manipulating of enemies in order to get yourself up there. Getting used to those whole jumping mechanics is really key in order to get better at the game, and be able to get to where you want to. Use another enemy to springboard up on that wall in order to get over here. You need to get up to the upper left area, as you can see, the bottom left entrance would have been blocked off. Over here, jump up to get to this shop, and buy the spring shoes. The spring shoes will give our characters a boost and allow them to have a slightly higher jump, which will greatly help them out as they're trying to get through this dungeon. As you can see, the spike shoes really come in handy, especially in tight areas when you're able to land on top of an enemy as you fall down. It's interesting to see what you lose more health on during the course of the game. Whether you lose more health by actually getting hit by enemies, or by how many times you end up having to fall from a high place and end up losing health that way. Stop by this end so that we can get back to the inventory screen. This way, we're going to grab the spring shoes, because they will actually help Lil out. Even though she has the best jump, they actually can help Lil out even more. Right 
break through the blocks up here in order to get to the small entranceway at the top of the screen. Grabbing those cross items and defeating all the enemies on screen is great for getting some items to collect. However, the worst can be is sometimes you'll get one of those crosses and five or six of the items that end up dropping from the enemies end up being those poison jars. Over here you can end up grabbing yourself one of the big potions. It's not an essential item, but you can use it in order to replenish things throughout the dungeon. Use those spring shoes and you're able to get up to this area. Walk back over to the right, you can actually see the Dragon Slayer Sword down there. Unfortunately, we can't get that yet. You can only get it as the brother, Roaz. You may have noticed several of these female portraits throughout the game. Those are portraits of the princess of the castle. If you walk just a little bit left of the dungeon entrance, you'll actually see a large castle in the background. Those princess portraits are actually used with the crown to teleport throughout the dungeon. Roaz is the character that actually can use the crowns to teleport. Using those is going to be key in order to actually get to the room where the dragon slayer is located. In this room, you can see one of my favorite enemies in game, these little cat enemies. They're probably like the cutest of the sprites throughout the game. I'm not really sure what exactly enemies are even called in the game. There is a list of them during the credits of the game, but it doesn't show you a picture, so I'm really not sure on the names of the enemies. In this area, you're gonna need a lot of magic because you have to destroy a lot of blocks. As you've noticed, every time I destroy a block with the Matak, it ends up taking away one piece of magic, and you need quite a lot of magic to get through this area. Once through, head down over here. Go over to the end because you're gonna need your health and magic back because we're getting ready for a boss battle. Once you have those replenished, go back up to the upper right, using the line to boost yourself up. Break enough blocks so that you can get a good jump over to the left, so that you don't end up falling on one of the blocks that ends up breaking. Fall down the left side, holding right, to get the chest open with the crown, then jump back up and grab the crown for the next boss battle. This one's a little bit more trickier and a little bit more advanced than the spider enemy. Walk over to the right, and you can actually use your projectiles to take out its projectiles. Then walk back and forth just behind it, delivering as many shots as fast as possible. You gotta be very quick because you're gonna be losing a lot of health very fast. So use either a turbo button or mash the button as fast as possible to take out the boss. Once that's done, you're back outside and head back over to the house. 